Hi, my name is Jimmy Sexton, the president of Esquire Group. Welcome to part two of our four-part series of the tax obligations of U.S. citizens and residents residing abroad. In part one, we discussed uh, the income tax reporting requirements of Americans abroad. Uh, in part two, we're going to be discussing the FBAR. The FBAR is the Report of Foreign Bank and Financial Accounts. Uh, the FBAR has been law for many, many years, but has only in recent years been publicized uh, and is now widely known by many U.S. Uh, citizens and residents abroad. Um, basically, the FBAR requires that you report accounts over which you have signature authority or a financial interest in. Uh, when we look at this, let's first determine what is a foreign financial account. Uh, at first glance, you might think, well, this is a bank account or this is a brokerage account, and you would be right. It includes both of those. But it could also include foreign mutual funds, foreign security deposits on a residence that you rent, insurance policies, annuities. Uh, it could also include metal storage accounts. Uh, so those things are foreign financial accounts. So now you have to determine, do you have signature authority over or a financial interest in those accounts? Now signature authority is pretty easy. If you sign on the account, the account's in your name, you have signature authority, this is going to be an account that you would be required to report. The second part of that, a financial interest, uh, is less clear. Uh, well, what happens if the account is not in your name? What happens if the account is, let's say, in your wife's name? You don't sign on it, you don't have access to it, but you transfer part of your paycheck into that account uh, every month to help pay household bills. Well, guess what? Because that account contains some of your money, you have a financial interest in that account, and that account is also reportable. Uh, the next thing we have to look at is when does it become reportable? Well, it becomes reportable if the aggregate of all of your foreign financial accounts exceeds $10,000. Now, it's not $10,000 per account. It's an aggregate balance of $10,000 which means if you have one foreign account with $5,000 in it and one account with $6,000 in it, the combined value is $11,000, which exceeds $10,000. You would have to report um, both accounts. Now, it's also possible that you could have signature authority over an account, but no financial interest. An example of this is let's say that you work for a foreign employer in a foreign country and you sign on your employer's bank account. Well, you don't have a financial interest in this bank account because it doesn't contain any of your money. But you do have signature authority over that account and you would be required to report that account uh, on an FBAR with including that account it aggregated to more than $10,000. Uh, additionally, if there is a joint owner of the account, that joint owner also needs to be reported. This holds true even if the joint owner is not a U.S. citizen or resident. So let's say you're a U.S. citizen and you're married to a citizen of a foreign country that doesn't have a green card and is otherwise not considered a U.S. resident. You would need to disclose the identity of your foreign spouse uh, on the FBAR in order to be in compliance with the laws. Now, failure to file an FBAR uh, can result in a $10,000 penalty and that penalty can go all the way up to 50% of the value of the account, plus criminal charges if you knew you were supposed to file and you didn't. Well, that concludes part two of our series, the U.S. tax obligations of U.S. citizens and residents living abroad. We're now going to move on to part three. We'll see you in the next part.